Well, so today we are looking at the romantic riding habit and let's have a short transformation from a matronly frilly lizard into an Amazon. We are starting, as usual, in a very fetching attire. I do look like a big baby, do forgive me. With um, linen chemise and linen pantalettes with nice lace and a very nice embroidered stockings and wool. Um, it's important it's embroidered because I might give someone a glimpse of my ankle, so you never know. So that's the staple undergarment of the period. Um, chemise would be either outside of the pantalets or inside, but because I'm riding, it would be much easier for me to fit my legs around the pommels if the chemise is tucked safely inside. Now, our next layer is a corset. Um, Oh, stays. This one you have already seen in the dressing up to 1830s ladies, but I've since um, upgraded it a little bit. So now it sports fan lacing just like the original one did. There you go. It's a bit complicated mess here, but it should lace easily and nicely. That's the theory. Now the fan lacing was introduced um, in the early 19th century to facilitate oh hello little Merlin, to facilitate getting dressed easily. Obviously when you have lots of legs like that and you don't have the split bust yet, it's difficult to put it on without without help. Um, so with fan lacing it should be relatively easy. Well, we'll see if I put it over my head somehow. And in the meantime, we have a little cameo of Merlin. Say hello, Merlin. Oh, it says hello. Good boy. Right, I'm going to take off my little morning cap. The caps were brilliant. I mean, they're just <laughs> horrible little things, but I love them. Um, they kept the hair dry and they, they, kept your, they kept your hair in the way it should sort of be for later. Now my hair is just arranged very very simply for the period, which is a braid at the top of my head and some loose curls in front of the face. Uh, these curls are not my own hair, my hair doesn't take a curl at all. Um, well, it does for about five seconds, so these are just extensions nicely pinned in. And again, that's a completely period solution. You would be wearing um, artificial curls. It was just easier. And it's right, let's see. Theoretically, I should put my stays on first and then do my hair, but I won't make it easy. <laughs> let's see if I can actually get into this without destroying my elaborate coiffure. Right, in we go. Oh my god! Okay, I think the hair is in. That's important. So you know what? I think I'm in. A little bit disheveled. There you go. Ta da! So that's a cotton corded corset. It's typical of late Regency and Romantic period. A little bit of tuck. It still has long busk. And that's the beauty of the I'm lazy. If you 
have stays and you would like to change yours into fan lacing type, which is brilliant. As you can see, it just takes no time at all. Fantastic. Darn it. Um, American Duchess have a very nice video showing exactly how to do it. And it's also on her blog. So click on the link and have a look. Yeah. Go a little bit tighter, really. So let's go a little bit tighter. Right. Fan laced stays. Quite cool, really. Mm -hmm. Super woman. Right. Next, under the habit, you there's a couple of things you can wear. You can wear longer woolen pantalets or, or, or Turkish trousers. Um, that would be especially welcome if it's winter and and it's cold and you do a lot of riding or doing travelling. For recreational riding, you just put a couple of petticoats. And sometimes you see. Right, have it still been quite sort of fluffed up with the corded petticoats, but having tried it on and side saddle, it really sort of you can do it and you can ride at a sedate pace, but galloping around might be a little bit tricky and you might trap these around the pommels. I prefer a little bit more um, sensitivity around the pommels, so let's just put plain petticoats. Funnily enough, you can see quite often, this is going to drive me crazy today. There you go. You see quite often a bit of um, white petticoats or drawers peeking up from under the habits, mostly because the habits are being carried in one hand um, when not on the saddle. Okay. And let's grab another petticoat, a nicer one this time. Right, and before we put a skirt, let's put a blouse on. Now this is a antique blouse, an original one from that period, sporting a really lovely colour and gathered and roast shoulders. Our blouses were very popular for riding and this one actually harks back to the um, habit shirts of earlier era when you have when you have additional security of that strap so that this skirt, the, the shirt does not ride up too much when you are in the saddle but there were shirts you could use just with a skirt for riding and they would usually come with sleeve support and very, very puffy sleeves. For this one, because I'm wearing a habit on top of that, <coughs> excuse me, there's no need. But well, you could definitely wear just a shirt, a very nice shirt, a nice cravat and a skirt habit, um, which was a very nice and cheap solution for ladies who just didn't, could not, you know, didn't own expensive clothing. Mind you, if you had a side saddle and a horse, you probably could afford a habit. But still in the summer would be quite nice. So this just keeps your shirt tucked in nicely. Let's put a variety of cravats or ties or bows were worn as well in a very masculine fashion at the time and just like masculine um, 
accessories that could be of different colours, um, different textures, could be silk, could be cotton, could be linen, could be pattern, could be plain. A lot of uh, variety and a lot of um, big charms to actually show off. So let us put this one on. The cravat or stocks originally had, um, had um, another function, allegedly, which is to make sure that your neck was supported. Um, that's how the modern stocks actually work as well. And uh, double knot, one knot, bow, a double knot. And also, you can use it as a tourniquet in case something happens. I'm not very good at it, am I? It's good again. Just a simple bow, please. skirt which I put somewhere here Oops. got it it's a full length wool skirt um, perfect for riding obviously quite white using cartridge pleats at the waistband so let's put it on a lot of people have been asking me why do I put skirts on you know from the from the top up like that the answer is if you have lots of petticoats or obviously later skirt supports and, and crinolines and bustles. It's really difficult to do it the other way around. Okay, where are we? skirt would often have an opening for a pocket but also so that you can pull the fabric through to make it easier to walk. But usually you would just hold your skirt here. Now shoes, again a variety of options possible depending on what kind of riding you're doing. For a, a specific shoes could be worn for specific for Again, hard riding, I would probably wear these from American Duchess or some hussars. But often you can, you can see lately just riding in these, which is a bit weird. But then again, if you are flashing your ankles, either walking around or sitting in a saddle, you can actually have a quite a nice view of the embroidered stockings. So, vanity, I suppose. Jacket. My wool jacket lined with cotton, glazed cotton. Um, the sleeves are very fashionably gathered with cartridge pleats. And I should have my sleeve support somewhere, but. Let us see if I can put it without, if they still work. Right. If 
if not, I have some photos of Steve supports in them. Not, not too bad. Right, that's going to be troublesome without the mirror, but let's do it. The buttons here are just the decoration. I'm using hooks and eyes to close it. Or rather hooks and bars. I can't see my boobs are in the way. better with sleep supports but I might change. Let's see. Little peplum. Lots of wool but it looks very nice on the horse. And let us put our hat on. This is one of the solutions for the period. A hat with a little veil made by Farthing gave historical hats. And funnily enough, it doesn't actually require any pins or no pins at all because of my hair that has disintegrated somehow. But that's what's keeping my hat in position. My hair. Okay. Obviously I need my gloves and I'm ready to get on a horse. Before I do, however, um, I will talk a little bit more about the saddles in the next video, but the saddle set that era already had the leaping head, the facilitating pommel. If you want to know a bit more about saddles, this book is absolutely brilliant. You can see that's sort of 30 saddle. My saddle is a little bit later without that third hook that was already disappearing by that time slowly. But it's quite a secure one and leaping head would be additional pommel like this. So yeah, very good book. Let me see if you can get any photos of, of similar attire. Still see nice two horn saddle. And that's basically what I really have, just without the extra hook. But it, you already have three horns, three pommels. So with this one you were you basically was much more secure. And yeah, there you go. Showing security. And let's see, just a nice chemise and a skirt and in a full gallop. So yeah, very highly recommend it. Have checked it out. Loads and lots of information. Absolutely fantastic. Right, let's get on a horse, shall we?
COVID safe. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you would like to support me, um, I've got the Buy Me Coffee account that will help me create a bit more videos more often than now. Um, obviously, with COVID, it's it's rather tricky at the moment. Most of our filming venues have cancelled, um, but oh well, we'll muddle through somehow. So thank you for watching and thank you for supporting me. And till next time.